Hi, I'm back. Uh, it's good to see you again, or at least to see me, since I'm the only one I can really see here on my camera. Um, I'm sorry it's been a, a week and a half or so since I published the last lecture. Uh, hopefully you're doing okay, and I haven't seen a lot of really stressed out students sending me emails or a lot of concerns about the paper assignments we've got, so I imagine you're doing okay. It doesn't seem like you're very confused about the assignment. The discussion board we had uh, last week where I asked you to post about what you were working on for writing number three, I suppose there were a lot of people posting there where um, saying they didn't really have a lot of an idea of what they were going to do yet. Um, so hopefully you've started to refine that. I did not see any real cries for help or anybody saying, I just don't think I'm going to be able to do this. So hopefully everything's pretty clear and you know what you're working on. I did want to clarify a couple of issues and a couple of things about writing number three uh, so that you can uh, make sure you're, you're doing what you need to do for that assignment. The first is um, the theorists. We have a number of theorists you can choose from, and I just want to run, run through the most obvious names for you right off the bat. I suppose you could probably do anybody from that justice chapter if you wanted to read on, but here are the ones that we covered from that justice chapter. The, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, John Rawls, Amartya Sen, and Bell Hooks. He, any of those four are perfectly great. Then we also had, during our gender week, um, uh, we added Mar Martha Nussbaum and uh, Shiva to that list. And I think you could probably also add Galbraith, Kenneth Galbraith, and uh, Elizabeth Warren to that list, our readings for this week. Any of them would probably do well as theories of justice, and any of them you could uh, used to interpret and translate for an audience that might not otherwise be exposed to those theories. And again, that's the goal of the assignment, to take this really hard, uh, confusing, and uh, maybe uh, sophisticated text and to make it interesting, to make it uh, understandable by an audience that might not otherwise read it. One of the ways that I think about this is, and I often talk to my uh, classes and say something like this, when I think about scholarly work, I think about work that is researched and uh, heavy-duty work, work that's talking about big ideas, work done by university professors, uh, the kind of research that, that you're kind of doing for a class like this, but you know, even much higher level stuff. When I think about that work, I think about uh, the difference between that and a popular source. Popular source is a source that anybody could pick up, anybody might be interested in. Any reader that has enough experience to be able to read the source could pick it up and uh, find it accessible. And the way I describe it to my classes when I talk about popular sources versus scholarly sources is, I say, you know, a, a popular source is a source that my dad could have picked up and read. A uh, scholarly source is not a source that he would pick up and read. He, he, my dad was an engineer. He was a smart guy. He went to college. Uh, he, he knew a lot of things. He knew far more about uh, math and, and science than I did, uh, than I do. Uh, but he, my dad was not a reader. He didn't really care about reading. He liked doing things. Uh, so he would not be that, all that interested in reading uh, John Rawls' A Theory of Justice. He would, he would have found it really hard to read and really boring to read. Frankly, I find it really hard to read. It is a hard book to read, but I enjoyed that. I enjoy reading the hard things because I get to read deep ideas, I get to read big ideas about the world, and I get to make them meaningful for me and, frankly, for you, my students. What One way I would think about this assignment is you are translating whatever text it is for someone like my dad. Somebody who would never want to read a text like that. And in doing that, you are making really hard, important ideas meaningful for somebody who would not otherwise read them. Now, you've got to pick the person you're, you're going to uh, write for. You've got to pick the person you're doing that translation for. Um, and that means you've got to know your audience. You have to know the text. You have to know your audience. Uh, you also have to pick your genre. And um, the assignment sheet has some information about genre, but I want to make sure you understand that a genre is a form of writing. 
and it, it's a form of writing that has its own particular rules and its own particular styles. So if you think about the difference between writing a letter and writing an email, or writing a, um, a editorial for a newspaper and writing a blog post, or writing a love letter and writing a business letter, they, these different genres have uh, different requirements and different rules for them. And within those, we can use it as a comparison. Let's, let's think about uh, vehicles. And you can think about all the different kinds of vehicles, airplanes and boats and motorcycles and cars and trucks and buses, all those different kinds of vehicles as being different types of genres. Now within those different types of vehicles, you also have brands and styles and models. Uh, so you have within uh, cars, you have uh, sedans and, and uh, station wagons and convertibles. You have many different models within those different brands, or within, within those different types of vehicles. And those different models would be different styles within a particular brand. So let's take this back to writing for a second. If we think about comic books, comic books, comic writing is a type of genre. Now within the act of comic writing, you have the superhero genre, you have the life story of a genre, you have the comic strip, you have the editorial cartoon, and all of these might be parts of the genre of comics. But within within that genre, there are subgenres. That's a that's a real complication of what we're doing. But what I want you to be aware of is whatever genre you pick for this assignment, whatever you decide you want to write in, you've got to know the genre. You've got to know the rules. You've got to know what you're trying to get across. And you've got to know how to write within that genre so that you can create an interpretation, a translation of this text that is meaningful for your audience. I want to, uh, I, I hope you've been enjoying uh, reading the different theories. Uh, there and. You know, we, I kind of took the week off last week for Hooks and Nussbaum and Shiva. I think they're amazing theories. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about them right now. Um, but I think they're really useful theories, especially the idea of feminism. Uh, because, you know, we, I think it's a, a really um, important consideration for all, us all to make. You know, wh where do we stand on issues of justice, particularly when it comes to issues of justice for identities, like issues of justice for, for women, or issues of justice for, for racial issues, for African Americans, or Latino exes, or uh, for, um, for uh, people from the Middle East. What, where do we stand on these different issues of justice for different identity, identity groups? Feminism makes us pay attention to those, and I think Nussbaum and Bell Hooks and Shiva all make us pay attention to those as well. I wanted to, uh, rather, instead of talking about the readings, which I, th I think you're doing a pretty good job talking about them in our, in our writing, in our forums, I wanted to just actually take a moment and talk about being tired, about the middle of the semester, about the hard work of education. And I'm, you know, I could talk to you about the hard work of education, of being a professor and, uh, and doing all this work, because you, you've seen a little bit how that hard work has slowed me down a little bit in what I can produce for you. Um, but I, I wanted to talk about the, the hard work of education for you as students as well, um, because I understand that it's hard. I understand that we are in the middle of the semester and just everything is piling up on you. In my brick and mortar classes, I can tell you that um, I'm having far more students coming in without having taken a bath before they come to school, <laughs> with uh, having very little sleep. They're, they're just tired in their eyes, um, with uh, being stressed out. I you can actually, at some point during a semester, um, you can actually start to hear more arguments in hallways where people are getting more stressed out because it's go, school is a lot of work. Uh, I want to talk to you about a couple things with that. It is really possible to get overwhelmed um, and to think that this isn't that you'll never get through it or that this isn't uh, worth your time. 
you know, oh my, my God, he, he's having this right in the first paper, and then we got revision of number two, and then we're already doing re writing number three, and this is just, and now I got to do an in-class exam, and I got to do a reading, and I got to do quizzes. It's just too much. It's possible to get overwhelmed, and it's possible to say it would be easier just not to do it. But I want you to really try to stay focused and keep yourself focused. Recognize that this is the time of the semester when people get overwhelmed and recognize that you're going to have to take extra steps to make sure that you are keeping focused. One of the things that happens when, uh, when people start to feel overwhelmed is that the guilt of being the bad student and somebody realizing that they are the bad student, um, the fear that somebody's going to come to them and say, you don't belong, you're a bad student, that guilt starts to really weigh on people to the point where they can't even open a textbook or check the website or watch a video um, because they just don't want to feel the negative feelings attached to education. I think it's a shame that we allow education to get to the point of negative feelings. I think it's a shame that we don't support each other enough in education so that we can realize that, that we're here for something very good. We're here for, for the grander idea of developing ourselves and developing our society and developing our ideas so that we can uh, build culture together. If you're feeling that guilt, if you're feeling this kind of overwhelming sense of uh, failed responsibility and, and you're not sure if you're ever going to get through this and this is just a pain and there's nothing enjoyable about it, um, you got to get to a point where you say, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to think all that negative thoughts about what I'm experiencing in school and, and refocus yourself on the idea. You know, we, we're doing ideas in this class. We're thinking about big ideas and we're focusing on our own ideas and how, those, how our own ideas can get bigger. And I think if you start to feel all the, that sense of being overwhelmed by education, it's time to refocus back on why you're here, to have the big idea, to be a person that, that can get the big idea and articulate the idea and prove, prove that idea and persuade others to accept it. That's what we're here for. At the very least, you have to get yourself to the moment of production to make sure you are producing what you need to produce to get through this class. Because every time you miss something, you're going to feel more overwhelmed going to start to weigh on you more. It's going to start to affect your ability to produce. And I can tell you this. I, I know this. I know it because of my own experiences as a student that um, I was often anxious in school. Not because I couldn't do the work. I could do the work. And not because um, I, uh, I was so worried about grades. It wasn't even the grades. It was the, the worry the stress and anxiety of other people's expectations. I've, uh, I've got a PhD. I wrote a dissertation, um, but it took me actually uh, 15 years to get through my PhD, to, to get through a PhD. I actually ended up going to two PhD programs because I started one dissertation and did not get through it. I started another dissertation and did not get through it. I finally dropped out of the PhD program I was in, and, and then a couple years later I decided that wasn't good enough, and I started another PhD program. What, what I've struggled with my entire life was feeling overwhelmed in education and feeling like it just it, I couldn't see the benefit of, of getting through the work with as least, little as pain as possible. It's a little ironic that I felt that, and yet I'm a very intense professor, and I expect a lot of from my students. I, ne I never believed education be should be simple, but I always believed that it should be something more. It should be something more than just sit dumb tasks that you have to do. It should be tasks that help you grow. I ask you to keep in mind that whatever we're doing in this class, we are we are trying to do tasks that help us grow. So. Please stay focused on those tasks. Please stay focused on your own ideas. Let me say one other thing, uh, and, and this is one reason why I wanted to talk about this with you today. You can see that um, I last week I posted the quiz late. Uh, this week I posted the forum late. Uh, this week, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but I am canceling our reading quiz because I just got it up late. 
I, I've been so busy with meetings and so busy with uh, with grading that I haven't been able to get uh, the things done that I need to do on the online class. I've been feeling a little overwhelmed as a professor. Uh, so um, I understand how you might be feeling. But we got to get through the class. We got to finish this class. Uh, we're about halfway through, a little more than halfway through, and um, we're, we can see the finish line. Stay with me. Stay working. Really do a great job on your revisions for rating number two. Really do a great job on, on your first draft for rating number three. And we're going to get through this. A couple of quick announcements. It's obvious. Uh, I, I already mentioned it, but I just want to reiterate. Right, forum number 13 for this week is an optional forum. I got it up late, so I can't really hold it, hold you accountable for it. But you may want a place to talk about Galbraith and to talk about uh, Elizabeth Warren. So there is a forum there. Feel free to post, talk about the readings, post your ideas about the writing, post your ideas about writing number three. It's there. Uh, also, quiz number 13, I'm canceling. It's too late for me to put it up. I was actually going to try to put up an extra credit quiz, but I couldn't figure out the system because the system would want to count the quiz against you if you didn't take it, and I didn't want that. So I'm just canceling quiz number 13. Uh, your revision for number two is due out on Sunday by 11.59 p.m., uh, and then we're going to figure out how to post uh, writing number three. I actually may uh, ask a question in the discussion board on what form your writings are taking so I know what kind of uh, workshop we need to do. I hope you're doing well. As always, send me an email if you've got a question. Let me know what's going on with you so that I can help you out. Have a good week.